There is nothing to correct the child. Teachers definitely need some correction. Somewhere you believe that creator has made a mistake and you want to fix it. If the new children don't do it like you, that means the world will change. That's wonderful. Whoever told you that you could change them with punishment? You don't have enough experience with children. So, first thing that you need to understand about a child is, that there is nothing wrong with him. Maybe you are a little twisted out. There is really nothing wrong with him. That's how life is. You twisted yourself to fit into your society. He is not twisted himself, he is just the way life should be. You don't like it. I want you to understand. If you don't like the miniature version of yourself, how should the world be bearing with a larger copy? <laughs> it is just that you are trying to educate them, not because they need to be corrected. Education is not a correctional center. Education is simply nonsense that's necessary to live in this world. Okay. Yes? If you just leave him in the forest, anyway he would learn how to live. But we not left enough forests. He has to live in a goddamn city, so we have to teach him the ways. If everybody lived in nature, there would be nothing much to teach, he would learn anyway, isn't it? Now you want him to live in unnatural conditions that you have created as adults, so we have to do some tampering. Let's do it as gently, as minimally as possible. We can't help it. We have to fit them into school, we have to fit them into university, we have to hip fit them into corporate world. It's a different world, I'm telling you. It's not this world, another world. So, because we have to fit them into another world, not this world, there's a problem. They belong to this world. You are an imported case <laughs> or at least you act like one. So all this trouble, if you understand that there is so much to learn for you from a child rather than the child learning from you, what the hell can you teach a child, tell me, about life? You can teach them some textbook physics, some textbook biology, some textbook chemistry. You don't have any first-hand experience of the physical forces in the existence. Only some nonsense that you read in the book. It's necessary to pass an examination, it's necessary to get a goddamn job. But you are not putting him through correctional. This, is, this should be understood. How do I correct him? Who said he's wrong? So if you think you must correct him, somewhere you believe that creator has made a mistake and you want to fix it, this is a horrific level of ego. Unfortunately, too many teachers on the planet suffer from this. They think creator has made a, mis has made a mistake and they're going to fix it. You're not fixing anything. You're trying to pervert them. Do you understand? <laughs> they are normal. You're trying to pervert them. You better understand this. They're quite normal. They're happy, they're fine, they're jumping around, joyful. You're trying to pervert them. How to be number one? 
Huh? What's being number one? Being number one means you're sick in your head. That's what it means being number one. Because if you want to be number one, the rest of the world should be at your feet, isn't it? Yes or no? Because there's only one damn number one. If you want to be number one, everybody else has to be beneath you. This is not success, this is sickness. You're trying to teach your child this kind of sickness. Be number one. Everybody should be beneath you. So, don't believe that you have to correct the child. There's nothing to correct the child. Child is fine. It is just that he still doesn't know how to fit into your society. He's wild, as life should be. But the problem is he has to live in a society. A wild human being, they lock him up somewhere. We don't want that to happen to him. So we are trying to adjust him to the society we have created, which we ourselves are not happy with. Are you one hundred percent happy with the society in which you're living? Are you? No. But you're trying to fit your children into it, perfect cogs who will fit and serve the society. So, at least you understand, this is not some kind of a perfect game. You know how to fix them, you know how to take them, you don't know anything. You're just teaching a few survival tricks for them. So please go in front of your children and admit them, admit to them that even I don't know how to be. Really, let's together try to do something A, B, C. If you get to Z, fine, otherwise A, B, C, D is good. According to their intelligence, if you exercise their intelligence to think and look and do things, they will do something. They may not do it like you. And it'll be great if they don't do it like you, the world will change, isn't it? If the new children don't do it like you, that means the world will change, that's wonderful. So, don't become a missionary teacher, please. Nothing to correct your children. Teachers definitely need some correction. For sure. Children need just inspiration, not correction. Children just need inspiration, they don't need any correction. Teachers for sure need correction. Mind you, I'm saying all this though we're running schools. Mm. And we have a whole circus of problems with the children. But it's okay. The problem is not because they are a problem. The problem is because we are trying to fit them into something reasonably well, so that we don't have to create a separate world for them. Whatever the kind of world we have, they have to fit into it. So we are making that effort. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with them. Second part, purification. Be a good son, just brother, spouse tender and good father. You will be surprised by this sutra, but it is of immense value. Be a good son and a just brother and a spouse tender and a good father. You will think what it has to do with his spirituality, it has to do much. You have to create a peaceful surrounding, only then you can fall into meditation. You have to create an atmosphere, an energy field, 
only then you can go in words in gurjeev's school in fontainebleau it was written on the gate if you have not settled your accounts with your father go back first settle your accounts with your father then come unless you respect your father there is no possibility of your growing is strange why what it has to do with the search and from another corner there is psychoanalysis which says settle your accounts with your mother unless that is settled you will never feel settled you will remain tense the whole psychoanalytic work is how to close accounts between you and your mother gracefully lovingly Pythagoras seems to be the first to say it exactly simply be a good son what does it mean to be a good son does it mean to be a slave utterly obedient if you are a slave you are not a good son if you are utterly obedient you are a hypocrite then what does it mean to be a good son if you ask people they will say good son means do what server of your father says it is not that simple because you can do it from the outside and you can resist it from the inside that's what children have to do they are helpless whatsoever the parents say they have to do it willingly unwillingly reluctantly they have to do it that creates a split in them they become two they start becoming false phony so one way is ordinarily thought that just be obedient to the father and you are a good son that is not the meaning of pythagoras then does he mean rebel against the father go against him do just the opposite whatsoever he says be a hippy or ippy or something if he says have short hairs then have long hairs if he says take a bath every day then forget all about taking bath for years if he says cleanliness is next to god then be dirty and claim that dirtiness is next to god no that too is not the meaning of being a good son in fact the second thing has happened in the world because the first has persisted too long too much enforced obedience has created a reaction then who is a good son a good son is one who is alert understanding respectful who listens to the father because the father knows much he has lived he has experienced life he has more experience he listens to the father he tries to understand the father he is open he is not in a hurry either to obey or to disobey a good son is one who is ready to listen to understand to learn and then if you feel 
that you agree with the father do it if you feel you don't agree with the father then say it there is no question of reaction just make it plain that you don't agree you will do but it will be done with forced effort it will make you phony if the father wants you will do it but it will make you phony it will make you split schizophrenic it will divide you a good communion is needed between the father and the son because the father represents the past and the son represents the future a bridge is needed and it cannot be one sided so it is not only for the son to be a good son the final thing is to be a good father too he is creating a family atmosphere in which meditation can grow easily a good son is one who is alert ready to obey the father when he feels he is right ready to say to the father that i am not willing to do it it will be false it will be phony and ready to go with the father if he cannot decide on his own because there may be things which you cannot feel either right or wrong then follow the father he knows better and the father simply represents the past the father simply represents all father figures all those who are elder than you older than you the father is simply a symbol of all those who have lived more than you experience more than you the teachers the elders a great respect is needed respect for their life respect for their experience there is no need to become a slave and there is no need to react against them understanding is needed neither obedience nor reaction and out of understanding if obedience comes it is beautiful and out of understanding if sometimes rebellion comes it is beautiful but it has to come out of understanding not out of reaction there are people who will not do a certain thing because their father says to do it how can they do it just because the father is saying they cannot do it they will do the opposite their egos are in conflict and there are people who know that it is wrong but they will do it because the father says both are wrong the good son is one who listens to the father to all father figures tries to understand with great respect with openness with no conclusions and then whatsoever decision arises in his being to follow or not to follow he goes with it it is neither reaction nor obedience it is simply acting out of understanding be a just brother with all those who are of your age be just don't be unfair don't exploit because if you exploit you create a tension around yourself create friendship around yourself because growth will be easier in a friendly atmosphere spouse tender 
with your wife, with your husband, be tender. Be soft. Because love has the other side of hate in it. And unless you understand what it means to be tender, soft, loving, there is every possibility love will bring great hate in you. People love the same person and the same person they hate. And that hate destroys all love, poisons all possibilities of love. And love is a great phenomenon. The person who has missed love will never know what prayer is. Will never be able to pray. It is only love's experience that prepares you to pray. Be a spouse tender. Be a spouse tender. Love the woman or the man with great tenderness, grace that has disappeared from the world. People's relationship has become very ungraceful. They have lost the whole language of tenderness. Their love life is so full of hate and anger and rage that may be one of the causes why God has become dead in this century. Love has disappeared, prayer cannot arise. Love is the flower, prayer is the fragrance. If the flower is not there, then there cannot be any fragrance. And good father, and in your own turn, circle is complete. Be a good father. What does it mean to be a good father? Don't enforce anything on your child. Give your love. Give your understanding. But always make it clear that the choice is the child's. If he wants to follow it, he can follow. But he is following his choice. If he wants not to follow, he is free not to follow. Again he is following his choice. Make everything clear to the child. You love him. So give your experience to him, but don't enforce it. Don't command. Let him understand. Let understanding be the only law and let him follow his understanding. Now you can understand. The father has to be just a helper. The father has not to mold the child in a certain pattern that he wants. He has not to use the child for his own ambitions. He has to love the child make him strong, make him more alert, so that he can search his own ways in life, make him more and more independent. The good father does not cripple the child, does not force the child to depend on him. And if there is a good father, naturally the son will be good. Because he will not be enforced into any slavery. And he will not have to react either. And if you have been a good son, in your own turn one day you will become a father. And you will be a good father. This is the family atmosphere, the space in which we live. This space has to be of intimacy of love, of grace. Only then meditation will be easier and spiritual growth will be enhanced.